Greetings, everyone, and great here with another Age of Pirates 3 replay. I'm on the south side as the green Mexicans with yoga pants enjoyer. Wait, there's actually a yoga research. No, wait, this is... Yes, yoga. So he can get his yoga pants. On the left side as is pink Japanese. We have Delarati. Butchered that. And as well as the yellow Indian player, we have her noise. On north side as the Cyan Dutch with King Turk. On the red Aztecs with Abu 401. And as well as the uh, uh, maroon Alsa Husua. We got Kenoki. On this map, we got a very important native, the water buffalo. As well as the Bakari Temple, we'll give you some yoga pants and some war elephants. And the Sufi Mosque, we'll give you access to the Boss, a heavy range cavalry that's also a lancer. And which you can also get a uh, Sharia Law. Let's see, no deck, no deck, no deck, no deck, no deck, no deck. deck. It appears to be no decks. He does obtain something, wasn't paying attention to what it was. Red has obtained a future Dakot, which has 35 damage, which is a, and also 150 health. That is a very good guy. You can put a round of the envoy, it wasn't his teammate. Goes for hunting doggos, has a shipment available, and let's see what shipment he will go for. Aztecs will go for a number of things. We've got the team 2v2. He does not have a team uh, three villager team card, which I think is a bit of a shame. We have Warrior Priest, Slingers, Fencing School, which does not affect Skull Knights of Warrior Priest. Mine allies, so we got a mix of Eco and some Kyrioner stuff. Got Kyrona Temple, we got the Villager Temple, Eagle Runner Knight Temple, so he's going for a Shock Army, and some Arrow Knights and Slingers. So quite a bit of temples here, and quite a bit of Eco cards, but does also have all the Knight Combat cards and the Slinger card. No Skull Knights. Skull Knights are definitely one of the best units in the entire game in my opinion. One of my favorite units as well. We do now have the Messenger, the Messenger is Attack. Uh, Indian players aging up with the Agri Fort, a glorified outpost. It's not selected a uh, ship there, and now almost has enough for another. Also, player aging up with the Hausa. Uh, no team cards, looks like standard Hausa. Japanese. Oh, yes, research the uh, team Ching Don Do. Very good card. Effectively gave their team plus 24% collection rate. One team card. This is going to be Fast Fortress. Somewhat Fast Fortress. Definitely Eco Deck. He has Dojos as well, so he's going to be economical. We also got the rare As Yasume Archer Attack. Veteran Battery. Lemur Cost and Training de Time Decrease. Huh. So it was a Flaming Arrow Deck? That's interesting. What's this here? Mortar Range. So we got an Artillery. Japanese deck. That's interesting, but for Cavalry Archers. Team Wood Push. We got a very revolting Mexican. Palabro, so he's maybe I'm for a Lancer. Okay, so he is playing something for a fast revolt, because Team Wood Push, I see no team cards here. Rush Fight, don't know who T. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Looks like an economical, but it's labeled rush. I'm not sure. It does have the team infantry hit points. <clears throat> okay, the Indian player has gone for a 3v3 deck. Does give a team to flail elephants in age 2. Okay, that's a interesting card. Could be pretty powerful, honestly. Oh, we got an H4 team card. Your entire team gets all units plus 5 damage plus 5 hit points. That's pretty nice. That's actually probably even decent for our not team card. So we got elephants. I heard elephants are quite sadistic. 
Magenta has claimed two trading posts. Pink has claimed one over here. So the may see, see some conflict here. Yellow's claimed one. Red's claimed one. Only person doesn't have a trading post is Cyan. And he can get one right here. Oh, he's going for this. Uh, nope. That is a magenta trading post there. Now it's a Cyan flag. C4 is there, gunning down the envoy. <clears throat> Let's see. We do have a round of raiders, which is not the Songhai big button raiders, so. Raiders are going to be torching down. Raiders do have decent torch damage, like the Mongol Step Riders. Raiders and Mongol Step Riders are pretty similar. Okay, he was gunning down these, uh. Monks there, not the guy of the cart. I don't know why. It looked like he was trying to gun down the guy of the cart. <clears throat> Those guys do go down. Oh, Gossam Surgeon's here. The Aztec War Chief will get, go down. How insulting. Red is deploying out a war hut here. Green could intercept it. <coughs> also has a shipment available. Builders. Okay, so the Az the Mexican player is not revolting just yet. He's aging up. Got the very rare age three for the Mexicans. Going for the Sonora. Monkeys being gunned down. Gym available. Not sure what he's going to be eyeing. Oh, he goes for the Fox Kala. Textiles. Monkeys slapping the explorer, the funny guy. Got him available for Aztecs. Only the Dutch has aged on up to age three, but we know the Mexican player is also aging up. Aztecs bring a shim of gold or coin. Raiders against these damage there. We've got Order Baristos, which is a horrible item against these raiders. These are heavy cap. These guys are light infantry units. And they it's actually shipping from the uh Japanese. I don't know why, I thought that was from the I was like thinking, oh yeah, got an Ethiopian player, but no, that not is not Ethiopian. <laughs> There's no Ethiopian here. We got the Akin, and also going for some Kingdom Builders. Times two Kingdom Builders now on the field. More insurgents for the Mexicans. Now we got the Church in uh, research for the Dutch, Religious Freedoms. Insurgents are technically the counter to Raiders. They do have a times three multiplier. They're basically a fast or a cheap Rodiallo. It will be pretty... F I think those insurgents may actually win versus these raiders. Be cutting a little bit on the close side. There's the Kingdom Builders. Brings in the University and the Fort there. There's what has what's next to the Training Post, so this will give them quite a bit of influence over the region. Going some coffee trade. We've got a bank boom here by the Dutch. He has currently... Five out of five. This one will improve the building by what two? 
Yep, it improves it by two, reduces the health though. We got now some Aztec Slingers here, which can be easy to report these insurgents. And does take those guys out pretty quickly there. We got a good number of sepoys, so the slingers will be just fine against this guy. We got some rapoots, which are shock infantry. Pretty sure they're shock, right? Oh, they died pretty quickly. No, they're actually heavy infantry, so they are. I got them mixed up the Soldi warriors. So, the is guy will rip apart the heavy infantry, no problem, being a skirmisher. We got some more. Insurgents here. Brahman does go down. Group here takes good damage. And that is Team Northside. Akin of the Nobles. Slingers are excellent. What makes them so good is in comparison to Crossbowmen, they are cheaper than Crossbowmen. They have the same range as Crossbowmen. They have twice attack speed, well, more than than half the damage. Because a half damage should be 8, they have 9. And they have full times to multiply. These guys are far superior to, than crossbowmen. They do have less health, but the primary build light infantry units for damage. We got another castle in the universe there. He's true. The super player is really trying to exert some influence over the region. Those units will go on down. I think about also the slingers, they have a really fast wind up and projectile speed. So, in comparison to, like, say, archaic archers, not necessarily crossbowmen, they are very responsive and they get their damage in quickly and a lot less overkill with the times two attack speed. I think that's the biggest benefit compared to crossbowmen is the responsiveness of the unit. Got Daimyo here, as well as a number of Saltieros, light infantry units, as well as some Dragoons, light cavalry. Okay, you receive some damage. And we got the Suda player has now aged him up, so has the uh, Japanese player. He's got the Golden Pavilion now in the field. Or no, he's infiltrated the... He has the spotting thing. Got the Toshiguro Shrine. There's a Times 2 Shrine, the Shogunate, which is Wopal and Marie Dwell Daimyo. He has some Dojos on the field. Which are currently deploying out archers. And the other one's being ghosts of the uh, Yumi archers. And he has a great Buddha there, which does give him the... Uh, well, temporary spots. We got a big round of war camps here. The Sua is going to ramp up production and gain quite a bit of influence there. The only way to improve the influence even more, you need to get out uh, town centers to go along with them, which are a bit more on the expensive side. Let's see, he has gotten uh, Japanese isolation as well. Arrows engaging. Best way to engage, help engage with light infantry is you can go for the close loss, which are heavy range cavalry. We got a decent amount of heavy or uh, light cavalry to engage those guys. Nice pull in the field. We do got a good number of champion riders here. So we've got quite a bit of heavy cav. The dragons will get some good damage onto them. We've got a number of war elephants here. Uh, this one, mouth pouts, I should more precisely say. Heavy calves taking quite a bit of damage there from the roof here. Got salty arrows. We're not going to be good against them. Akin the nobles could stand 
Turn around and fight and draw some fire. Stall his opponent and allow him to escape. Got some eco run knights, which are range shock infantry. I never realized how range shock infantry is in the game, but that actually is a pretty rare unit type. Champion of Raiders takes up the answer, so we'll some nice knights. Dragon especially four. We got a number of light cavalry here as well, so the magenta heavy cav composition is nothing good. You may want to stop producing the heavy cab and start getting some other things. The four tiers take a bit of damage. Sleeper's starting to get overran. There's a lot of light infantry fighting here. Heavy cab push me forward. They'll find an opportunity to engage all the light infantry. This is where they will shine right here. So we've got a number of dragons this region. Through here is going to go on down. Now the archers engaging. Magenta's force is being cleaned up. There's a lot of fire there. He got a little bit overran. North side. Red. What does Red have on the field? He has. Oh, he lost all the slingers. Going for bringing back his war chief. Oh, he has been resurrected. Going for Shimmer's slingers or the slinger temple, which is very nice. He is not aged up while his teammates aged on up. Oh, the Japanese players aged on up for the team south side. More sea poison brought in, bring us some red coats as well. Just want to bring in some heavy cab. The overall sling is still be pretty good. Eagle Runner Knights, not so much. They're not fighting against both a good number of heavy cab. Yeah, I think that slingers and coyote runners are probably the way to go for the Aztec player. Also, player has a shipment available. Also bring a good number of villagers. Champion Lithid Knights being pulled on the field. Japanese players bring a good number of villagers as well. He has multiple town centers queued on them. And the Mexican players bring in villagers who is Haciendas. He also has quite a bit of resource stockpiled on up. He may be eyeing for a bolt. Which here is pretty forward. He is also H3, he has not aged up to H4 just yet. Slinger is over four, gets some decent damage there. We also got some Eagle Runner Knights mixed on in, which the light infantry will rip them apart. They also have all the slightly less damage for the infantry, but they do have twice the time to attack speed. Lift a nice push away forward. They do have mixed armor as our effect, plus a bit of AoE to them. Over here is getting over overrun, but it looks like they also getting overkilled by the Salty Arrows. Lift and Knights, however, getting overran by the Dragoons caused a bit of an issue there. Lift and Knights now trying to gaze those Sultieros. There's also some Gurkhas here. See Poison Red Coats pushing me forward. The Aztec player backed out of the game. And the Mexican player has revolted to the Yucatan. That structure does go down. Dutch player seems to fire. Look nice for straight forward. There's a 2v3. Now Japanese archers for straight forward. They do have decent range for our light cavalry unit. And also good anti-artillery multipliers. They're overall a decent unit. They have good range, good damage, and good multipliers. They are two population. I think they're also a bit more expensive than regular tiers. Now we've got Carby in our route here. This is a war game. What do you expect? Heavy infantry infantry four being put on off there. Of course, Red's villagers are idle. We now have the Soul Shreddies. Asians gather in a toggle that allows workers to gather wood. Okay. And now we've got the factory being shipped on them. I'm not sure what wood to gather on the Asian is going to be useful for. Maybe it's useful? I have no idea. Now the archers moving around. Let's see, it doesn't appear to be any upgrades on these forts. The sea sandwiches, okay. 
but we've got a number of the Japanese mortars deployed on the field. And they should be able to get some excellent damage on these structures. Bombard attacks against uh, structures? Or is that some sort of like a charge attack or a special attack? Either way, that's 500. War camp does go down. Villagers try to escape to the town center. And he does find the mortars there. He does lose a couple of the war camps, but those are replaceable. Root heroes are engaging. Lift and Knights upon the field. They will be countered. Going those Lift Knights, not great. We've got a massive number of field guns here. Upgraded Falcon S. They got a decent fall in the archers. But gotta be careful around these guys. These guys do have a times 8 multiplier for artillery. They are an anti artillery unit. It's actually a decent number of these uh, mounted archers still alive there as well. Ending relations with whoever the Indian player has. We got a good number of these oh, elephants here. A bunch of light cavalry. Quote unquote cavalry. Quote unquote light of 72 damage. Six population. And calling them light elephants is a bit of a weird thing to say as well. Good number of saltieros there. We got a good number of root here. And there are, of course, carbiner root here. The Royal Guard version of them. Which I think they have, what, increased health? They are one population unit, but right now they have nearly a plus 100% uh, health. Maybe they have some cards to go along with that. Okay, this is a revolution deck if you want to take a quick look at that. Dutch hasn't. Oh, he does have the cavalry combat card there that may have helped him get that increased health as well. As plus being plus 50% in H4. Got some red coats and sea poise here. Root here against good camp on all the elephants. Something went down there. I'm not sure what it was. But those elephants will just get overran. The. Heavy infantry units may want to just pull up, switch the bayonets, start stabbing the horses. We just got a very good number of root here. He's almost maxed out of villagers. He has a great number of banks. I think it's bank. Nope, he can still get two more. Overall, in a 2v3, they're doing quite well. I don't know if, you, if teammates back out, if your other teammates get any benefits. It would be quite nice if you get some sort of benefit. If you have your teammates back of the game, like some sort of percentage multiplier economy for dropped out teammate. If you really want to try to win a 2v3. Sartia is engaged. He has another stream available. He's needed 4,000 coin. He could eye for a vault right now. He has a good amount of resources. Oh! He's revolting. To South Africa, which can give him uh, Imperial War Wagons, right? Among some other things, I don't know what else they get, like weird war, uh, garrisonable wagons, the truck wagons. Yeah. Which apparently they, the more guys garrison inside, the more damage they do. Faster, stronger, the more units are garrisoned, so I don't know how that works. Uh, villagers are migrating around. We've got quite a bit of artillery push here. And we've got the level 2 revolt for the Yucatans. So now they're what? Incans, right? Or Mayans. So they can brace the mine calendar and cause the end of the world. Mortars engaging, gain some splash damage there. Their splash damage is. They have a good splash radius. Sounds like a great splash damage. They're okay against that. Now we've got the uh, quarter toast firing moving around. We've got the Imperial War Wagons for the uh, South Africans. You also retain all your villages as well, so your economy is not interrupted with this one. Here, disables your war uh, route here, disables the dragoons. I'm assuming, yeah, it does not replace the uh, Carpenter's War Wagons, that would be stupid. 
but now he has access to Imperial War Wagons. So he has an H5 unit available. Uh, some other stuff. Increase bank uh, limits to bank wagons. Add to bank uh, uh, bank build limit. <laughs> you can get a lot of banks as the South Africans. Plus you get a coin or co diamond mine, which basically lasts what has a hundred thousand coin in it or a million coin. It won't expire. Nothing nice. Charge my four. Get some damage on these mortars. We got a good number of these Quarto uh, light cavern units. Yakin and Knobles are, of course, a musketeer with less damage. They have AoE to them. Go to Christmas against all those light cavalry. Also, a number of the uh, Salty Air to Rose Balls Avenger. I have no idea what make up, make of them. They seem to have pretty good damage. Also, bringing the Rasado gives you capital and upgrades. Also, some capital research. Asses for uh, factories of food, because right now he has plenty of coin. He could go for around mercenaries. He has plenty of coin to pull out some expensive mercenaries. More war racks to be shipped on in. We got the peace treaty or ceasefire possibility. A good number of girls in the field going for castle defenses. Oh, I didn't realize signs pushing all the way over here. The mine player is starting to take some severe damage by these light cavalry. Your war wagons have nearly a thousand health and also 86 damage. These villagers actually have 25 damage. They actually are combat uh, capable. 200 health, they're basically, no, yeah, they're basically uh, militiamen. They don't degrade and expensive to replace. But here's getting some good damage there. War wagons moving around. Trek wagons streaming on in. Not sure what Yellow's doing. He has the uh, rat. The, uh, I don't know why I thought rat. Keeper of the rats, that's why I thought rat. Light infantry are definitely going to be good. For, actually, no. These guys have no damage multiplier versus uh, light infantry. They are. They, these guys are heavy infantry. Okay. So they're a Carolyn Revolutionary hybrid. We need salty erdos against all these guys. We also got the truck wagons. They're they're there. They're helping, drawing some fire from the war wagons. Indian player has knowledge from the shipment available. Indian relationships is going for some Kurikos, which is going to be a good idea for some war wagons. We got more of the heavy infantry pushed way forward, so overall, light infantry is still the good composition for these team south side. Uh, Gatling camels. Mercenary Gatling camels gains good damage, but they're taking a bit of AoE. They need to be in some sort of split up formation. Looks like the dojos have gone down. It's a good damage there. I've got the Emirs going getting gunned down. I have a large number of bullets on from camels. Got some Kurkos here. War wagons still causing some issues. Got 73 villagers versus 92 versus 72 versus 58 versus 50 versus abandoned. Here are tuning their horns. Lippin' Knights, of course, gonna be reasonably effective. These guys don't. Wait, okay, the Avengers are the light infantry unit, while the infantry are the heavy infantry. Okay. So he does have uh, light, inf uh, light infantry units. Okay, that's good. But these are, of course, heavy cav, and you don't want to use light infantry against them. Let's take out some of the Falcon Nester with this mounted archers. Very good. War wagons moving around. The light infantry could engage them. Got these war wagons pushed way forward. 
Berka is doing some decent work there, but of course these are each five units. And these guys, they're honored, so they are each four. But the difference in age is very, well, very important. Uh, they're trying to gun down the red fort. Because after all, he was South African, but he was Dutch, so he, he wanted the blue fort rather than the red fort. War wagons engaging some of these mortars up there, or flaming arrows. Looks nice, still cause some issues here. Also got a number of raiders here to help out as well. Looks like raiders got a bit of AoE to them now. I'm not sure what upgrade they've got to keep them akin to a Lancer variant. Got some. Here's the infantry, which are, of course, the Musketeer variant. But she does need a handful of them. Trim available for the Indian player. What should go for? Probably the team tactics. House up player. <clears throat> Going for a whole lot of nothing. He's not a pop cat at the moment. He can pull out some stuff. You also may want to find some or rectify this lack of coin income. I see some mines still on the field, I believe. Got a shogun being shipped on in. Japanese player. Gets all the heavy. He may want to go for Ashkar Musketeer and hit and Flaming Arrows. I'll say it's a good composition. Though right now, Flaming Arrow plus the Mountain Arch is not a bad composition either. I think he should go for more Flaming Arrows against all the Anaconda kind of Nobles. Losing a mass of villager. The Japanese players down to 20 villagers. I think the Japanese players are disintegrating. <clears throat> The, uh, the uh, mine player has never really got a whole large amount of villagers. He is still building villagers, though. And the Indian player still has a good number of Gurkhas here. Yes, he 65 villagers. He's lost a good number of villagers. He still has the uh, Green Mata. But we've got a good number of the Heavy Cav here. They have AoE, they have bonus damage infantry, so these yes. light infantry units are going to get ripped apart by the Raiders. War Wagons can. Trying to pick up more villagers. I think, yeah, Team Southside is going to cast some GGs. These age 5 units have got to cause some issues. Though he is producing a good number of Gurkhas, just need more. He actually needs better, faster production speed at this moment. He's activated Ceasefire, which will give them a brief window to regroup. I think the Japanese player is pretty much knocked out of the game. Yep, they're just gonna go. Sh he's going straight for the Korean Mata. Here's Gunova Gurkhas. He's able to stall out for one round of Gurkhas. <coughs> Mine player backs on the game. This is probably gonna be the end of the game. But yeah, it's pretty much over. I'm just gonna fast forward the rest of it. My voice is starting to go out. More Gurkhas. And yep, Team Southside has finally surrendered. This is Anna Grace, thank you for watching, and on the next replay.